What's up, everyone, and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Our first question has some slight spoilers for the Bad Batch finale, so if you haven't seen it yet, skip ahead to the next question at the time code listed here. <laughs> I'll make you put it here. Okay. <laughs> um, Lil God asks if we'll see Nala say in live action in The Mandalorian. I, I wanted to include this question just to talk about Nala say in general. Uh, because I, I do think that whatever the Empire is keeping her for is probably connected to the stuff that we saw in The Mandalorian, the the weird, creepy clone thingies. Yeah, I I was so excited when we saw that. I mean, we don't know who it was, but that random person, because they were in basically the same outfit with the patch and everything as Dr. Pershing. Pershing. Um, whether or not Nala Say has made it as far as it, where, like the time of the Mandalorian, I'm not sure. I'm going to guess no, just because it looks like they're having trouble cloning at that point. And I really, I've said this before, but I really love the idea that the Empire was just like, ah, we'll blow up Kamino. We don't need him anymore. And then they find out like, oh, crap, we needed all that. And they have Nala Say, but I, I could see her being maybe like a Galen Erso type where she sabotages whatever she's working on. I also kind of think that if Omega hears that Nala Se is in trouble, Omega is the kind of person that would probably try to get the Bad Batch to go help her and mm -hmm. rescue her. So yeah, I I'm guessing that Nala Se won't be part of the Empire for long. Hopefully for good reasons and not for more like Kamino and murder reasons. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'd be really cool if we saw in season two like you said, them go rescue Nala Say, and then to see the Empire actually, like, talk about, like, oh, no, like, she was our only shot at getting this right, and now we ju we're just on our own, so that would be really cool to Maybe see. Maybe we shouldn't have wiped out everything. Nick Canavan wants to know how many seasons of The Bad Batch we think there will be. I'm gonna guess three or four like I, I don't know why i just default to kind of star wars rebels length i don't think it's going to be a seven or more season show like the clone wars was originally supposed to be seven or eight seasons uh i don't think it's going to go that long but i could see it going for three maybe four yeah it's hard to say because i don't like i always thought that this would be a very limited series and i was happy but surprised that it was getting a second season i'm gonna guess that it's only two seasons you're just gonna keep whatever number it, it is currently like that's how many seasons we get yeah i mean i i could see it i could see that being the case you know it's all it depends on the story they want to tell and they're the only ones that know that i i kind of think that they probably went into this with a number in mind uh and i wonder if they were just like okay disney here's the pitch for the show Here's how many episodes it'll be and how many seasons. And maybe it was two. Maybe it's more. But I, I could just see Disney approving, especially after the success of The Clone Wars, being like, okay, we'll we'll go ahead and approve multiple seasons for this thing because, I mean, we want our Disney content and, oh, 16 weeks? <laughs> yeah, sure. Put it up there. Yeah. Samuel Mord asks if we could see Starkiller show up to fight the Bad Batch in future seasons. I don't think so, and here's why. I, I just think that that would not be a good translation of the character because he was Darth Vader's secret apprentice, and they might take that away. If they ever make uh, Galen a canon character, they might take that aspect away, but I guess that just doesn't feel like it's doing the character justice to have him pop up randomly as an Inquisitor. I liked the idea, and they threw around the idea of him showing up in Star Wars Rebels much later, because that would keep him pretty much on the same timeline that he should have been from Legends. Now, it would, it would just definitely feel like we're plucking this Legends character and putting him at a completely different spot, just because. Yeah. I don't think Starkiller is coming back. I That's... Sorry to say it bl bluntly, but... I don't. I don't think there's any room for canon or any room for that character in canon right now. I mean, I think I agree. I think that the best shot he had was as an Inquisitor, 
and that didn't pan out and i don't know because the inquisitor like that still at least works under vader i think they would do away with the secret apprentice thing um but to bring him into bad batch it would just feel like it, it, that's no longer star killer unless it just looked like sam witwer and sounded like sam witwer it would be like cosmetic only star killer mm -hmm. plus he could never be as cool as he was in the game he can never really li live up to his game version, I think. I think that's true, too. They they would depower him significantly, I think. Inthert wants to know what story we would really be upset over if it got retconned. This is still kind of like a Bad Batch-esque question because there was a little bit of retconning here and there. Still, like, in broad strokes, it works, especially with, like, the Kanan comic. And is there a story that if they did anything like that to, I would be upset about? The Alphabet Squadron books came to mind pretty quickly. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, to be honest, it takes a lot to upset me about something. Uh, and I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that I would just be furious over if it got changed. It's... An interesting thing, because it's very, like, I, I would admit to being hypocritical about this, where some things, if the Cassian show, I've said this before, if the Cassian show does away with the one-shot Cassian and K2SO comic, I don't care. If they, like, make some details line up, like the name of the planet where they first met, and some of that stuff, like, that's good enough for me. I didn't really care for the comic, so if they want to tell a better story, I'm all for it, and... It's it just all comes down to the stories that we really, really like. Mm -hmm. So if something comes along and removes Alphabet Squadron somehow from the canon, I would be very upset about that. I guess I could say, like, the events that took place in Black Spire. But, like, that sure. stuff feels pretty secure because it's literally in Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> like, right, Vi, Vi is there. Vi is a person in costume walking around the park. Uh, but I love her character, and I love that book and everything that happens in it. So I guess, especially the Archex stuff. Or, I mean, like, you, you like the Phasma book, too. So that could be something where uh, maybe someday they do, like, a live-action Phasma show, and it's not an adaptation of that book. Would you be upset by that? I, uh, I guess. I did really enjoy the Phasma book, but it would be... <laughs> I think that would be hard to do, uh... So, yeah, it, they would probably change it, but I'd get over it. <laughs> William Tressel asks if you can jump through the rings of a stun blast without being stunned. This immediately made me think of that... What was that game show where people... <laughs> where you have to, like, line up yeah. with the... <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put the clip of it in there. I, I forget the name of it, but I'll find a clip of it if I if I can. It's like some shape is coming at them, and they have to like try to get through it. Um, they have to match the shape. <laughs> it's not. Is it knockout? It's not knockout. Uh, but I'll, I'll find it. That's very funny. But I thought the question was really funny too. Just imagining someone trying to like dive through the the stun hoop. Yeah. I'm gonna guess. Uh, as much as I like that idea and would like to see it attempted, I'll guess that the stun hoop is not like the actual blast itself, but it's kind of just an indicator of where the cone of effect is. Yeah. Kind of like a tracer uh, and, and bullets. It's like you could dodge just outside of it, but like the ring and then everything inside of it, it would be affected. Yeah, I think there's probably some invisible field inside of the ring. Um, but it's like I, if you're <laughs> shooting a net, like a crowd controlled net. Right. That's yeah. That that's my guess. I will be thrilled <laughs> if they ever <laughs> if we see someone try to stun Grogu again, like they stunned him in the Mandalorian. <laughs> he and he's just like jumps not up this and he's time. Like, Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> or like, I was trying to think of like characters that could do that. And I was like, Frog Lady could do it. Oh, yeah. And any, I mean, a lot of Jedi, I feel like could do it, especially the, the small and agile ones. But Palpatine could have with his little spin move. Uh -huh. <laughs> I hope we, I hope we get an answer. I, I hope we see someone attempt that someday.
That's it for our patron questions. If you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here, just head over to Patreon, where we leave every submitted question a written response. If you're not a patron, you can learn more by following the link in the description. We have tons of other rewards, like audio commentaries for the films and every new Star Wars series premiering on Disney+. We also record video reactions to every new series as we watch them for the first time. We're doing book clubs to discuss every new Star Wars book as they release. We have behind-the-scenes content, comic reactions every Wednesday, and more. All of that is available right now on our Patreon if you're interested. On to YouTube questions, Star Wars Decoded asks if the sentient moss in Dooku Jedi Lost could be related to the Dringir. Such a wild question. And this is what I love about Star Wars fans who are able to take the time and go back and find stuff like that, where I've, I completely forgot about the sentient moss until you mentioned it, and then I looked it back up. Uh, you have to give me a refresher because that I don't remember... It's still pretty vague, but they it's Sifo-Dyas and Dooku, and they're on a planet with sentient moss, and it gives them visions and, like, speaks to them and stuff. Uh, sounds like shrooms to me. <laughs> Jedi shrooms. Yeah, it sounds like sifo ate something he should not have. <laughs> but could that be related to the Dringir? Yeah, maybe, because... It was written by Kevin Scott, who is a High Republic author, and he was already planting seeds in Dooku Jedi Lost. I get it. Seeds. Yep. <laughs> that was not on purpose, but I nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> so he, he mentioned a lot of characters. The High Republic era was first mentioned in that story. So I, I think it's very likely that we could learn more about that moss over the course of the High Republic storytelling. Joseph Simpson wants to know if there are any stories we wish the Clone Wars had been able to tell, not including the canceled arcs. So I really love the episode Lair of Grievous. I think that that is a character that deserved more. I mean, he gets a lot of screen time, but more exploration instead of just being a very over-the-top villain. I would have liked to see more of his history, uh, maybe flashbacks or, or something, just a, a little more of a deeper dive into his character instead of just showing up and then getting foiled and running away again. Yeah. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little more of Anakin's training prior to episode two. So More flashbacks. Yeah, I mean, just flashbacks or maybe if it had started a little earlier and we could have seen just like some extra content. Or just him being knighted. Yeah. I think that they probably did, didn't do that because of the 2D Clone Wars series that came out. That covers a lot of that stuff. And they probably just didn't want to step on any toes. But with the whole Legends thing, yeah, it's like, well, I kind of wish they did explore that a little more mm -hmm. in, in the actual series. Yeah, it just would have been cool to see like what those 10 years looked like. Darth Bricks Productions and Ares Storm both ask if the event that sends Rex into isolation could be him fighting or killing Cody. I like that idea. It's grim. Yeah, sure is. But I like it because it, it kind of reminds me of the Umbara arc where the clones are tricked into shooting each other and just how much that affected them. And Rex, at this point in time, for the Bad Batch, could be yeah fighting for his brothers, but... If not all the clones defect, which I do think the finale was kind of hinting that, you know, more are going to go that route, but probably not all of them. And if Rex learns that fighting and resisting against the Empire means fighting and killing his brothers, that might make him want to step back. Mm. I I don't know. I, I always thought that it was just like him sneaking around trying to find the the clones that we see him with later on um i don't know if he would be <laughs> fighting or trying to kill cody because that seems like a a big deal I, mean, I don't think he would be looking for a fight but i could see him approaching cody his old friend and being like come with us and cody being like no and you're a traitor and now i'm gonna try to kill you okay so yeah trying to just save him yeah but it goes horribly horribly wrong Ugh. i mean that would be pretty tragic i'm gonna say no just because i don't want that to happen <laughs> saved by grace wants to know if bernester Rowe will be one of the most important characters in the high republic she has been in a lot of stories so far 
But I also, I feel like I'm just paying a lot of attention to the younger characters because I suspect that we're going to get some time jumps, maybe in between phases, and that we could see these younger characters grow up. Especially, the one that really makes me think that is Keeve Trinis, who just got knighted, and we know that she eventually becomes a Jedi Master and then one of the Lost 20. So... If we're going to get that far, I feel like there are going to be significant time jumps and we're going to see the younger characters grow up and become more and more important. Yeah, I I love her character and I do think she is important to like a lot of the different stories. But I mean, I think there's a lot of Jedi that are going to be important in yeah. these books. And like like you said, as we see them grow up and get a little bit more experience. Um, I think she'll be one of the more important ones, but probably not the most important one. Well, I'm suspecting, guessing maybe that our current like main characters, I would call them, main Jedi being like Avar Chris, Delon Geos, Elzar Man, that they might not fade away, but take less of the spotlight. Mm -hmm. and characters like Bell and Vernestra and Keeve are going to become like that next generation. So maybe phase two is going to focus a lot more on them. Uh, I don't know. It's just kind of a feeling I have. Yeah, I haven't finished Out of the Shadows yet, so maybe I'll have a better opinion when I do that. She definitely has some interesting stuff ahead of her. That's all I'll say. That's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitch. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.